Good evening, welcome to Borough Fan TV and the Monday Night Show with me, James Hutchinson. Hope you're enjoying the bank holiday weekend. Uh, Borough have certainly done their bit, getting their first victory of the season against Swansea City on Saturday at the Riverside. We're going to look back on that game and also preview tomorrow night trip to Watford and the big tease we are derby next Monday night against Sunderland, back on the menu after a four-year absence for some reason. Um, and they may be led by Tony Mowbray in the uh, opposition dugout, so... Plenty to talk about. Also, transfer gossip and the odd signing since the last week. So, there's loads to get through and help me to do all that tonight are Joe Scott and Liam McDermott. Welcome to the show, boys. Cheers, James. Hi. Great to see you, lads. Uh, and as always, Borough fans, you know the drill. Get involved. We love to hear from you. Get in involved in tonight's debate on the Monday Night Show. So, uh, we'll start off with the Swansea game, lads, uh, at the weekend. It's always nice to talk about the Borough victory. Um, Liam, there was a lot of expectation uh, on Borough to do well this season. And I think there was more riding on Saturday's game than a usual home match day. Would you agree with that? Do you think the pressure was maybe ramped up by the start we've had to the season in terms of disappointing results rather than performances? Yeah, you can feel it creaking up, couldn't you? And you're just thinking, if it comes off someone's backside or something, we just need to get a win. We just need points badly. Yeah. And I kind of guess that it probably wouldn't be our best performance that we get the first win at. And I, and I don't think it was, to be honest. But... Yeah. It's just getting that monkey off your back and and you know what it's like. You've got the, the the negative lot, don't you, in the background and their voice just gets louder and louder and then people start thinking, well, actually, maybe he is a one-trick pony. Maybe yeah. maybe we haven't got an answer. Maybe this isn't going to be the season. And it just builds, doesn't it? Um, but anyway, it's good to get that off our back, get three points. Um, and you like to think now, hopefully, a couple of signings in. We just start getting a bit of momentum, start, yeah. start building. Definitely. Yeah. Craig Collentine, hope you're well, pal. He's out in the USA. You know, hope you're enjoying yourself, mate. And it was good to get the win on Saturday, definitely. Yeah. And contributing to that, Joe, without doubt, was uh, a player we brought in in the past week, Matt Clark, who's joined us from Brighton. One, were you happy with the signing? And what did you make of his performance on Saturday? He was terrific. I mean, um, he, obviously, he was the alternative because we were going to get Jacob Graves, but obviously, he signed a contract extension with Hull. And then, all of a sudden, he just, we just started signing to bring in Matt Clark in the very last moment. I mean... He did well for West Brom last season. I think he was their fans' player of the year last last season. Um, and he's brought some of that mentality over to us, particularly in that game. He did well. He did well with, with the uh, creation of the second goal. And then um, he had a very good debut. I mean, it was. A, I think it's a good bit of business. And uh, looks like a decent signing for us so far. Yeah, definitely, pal. Let us know, Borough fans, what you thought about Matt Clark and his signing and his performance at the weekend. Um, and Liam, another player who came in and made his league debut for us at the weekend was Liam Roberts. He took over between the sticks for Zach Stefan. How would you assess his display on Saturday? Yeah, I suppose he wasn't he wasn't tested that much, but when he was, he he seemed to be quite confident, didn't he? He's quite reasonable. He came out for crosses and what have you, so there was no flapping. Um, yeah, I thought I thought he came across quite confident, quite commanding. Actually, less flapping than than we've seen from Stefan, to be honest, because yeah. I've. I think the jury's still out a little bit on him. I know he's obviously a very talented player. He plays for a great club, but you think um, there's been some little moments, hasn't there? And I'm putting it down to being a bit rusty, you know, mm. hasn't done a full season, that kind of thing. But um, but yes, I was really happy with that. And and, and I think he'll probably play again, won't he? I thought, I don't think Wilder's going to rush rush him back um, yeah, because yeah. he's got a decent keeper. But it's good to see us have a little bit of a bit of depth in goalkeeping department because it's been a long, long time since we've had that goalkeeping issue sorted, isn't it? Um, yeah. Since Shea Given, or I can't think the last person that we had, probably Randolph. Like Randolph, that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree, mate. Yeah, Steve Walker, thanks for watching. Steve he said Roberts looked good, but he also said that uh, Matt Clark's a very solid sign, considering yeah. his lack of pre season, he did very well. And David Olsen on that point said the defence looked a lot more solid. And Joe, I'll bring you in on this point with regards to the defence. There's been a lot of talk so far this season about who the three centre-backs are going to be. And Clark obviously fitted in there on Saturday in terms of the left-sided centre-back. Do you think that's the three now? Chris Wilder's first choice three, that it's going to be Clark, Lenehan and McNair? It looks, it's certainly looking that way. I mean, you look at overall, I mean, considering what Clark did on Saturday, he did well on the, left, on the left-hand side. And then you look on the right side, you probably look at someone like uh, McNair, something like that too, where... I'll drive forward and then you look at Lenahan for his uh, leadership qualities in, in that back line. So, I mean, it probably rotate, I think, with possibly McNair and Bry from time to time. I won't be surprised if Chris Wilder would do that, considering, you know, he loves to rotate about the centre-backs mostly. But I think 
I'd probably say we have both McNair, Lenahan, and Clark are probably considered the uh, starting back three for now for the season, I think. Yeah. Joe, there's a few people as Chris Smeaton's got in touch with us and Steve Walker's again um, got involved and he said there, he thinks that Fry could be gone this week and Chris Smeaton said he thinks, uh, will Dale Fry remain at the club? What's your thoughts on it, Joe? Do you think Dale Fry, I know Chris Wilder mentioned last week in the press conference, he doesn't see any more major outgoings in terms of first team squad players or regulars, but do you think Fry could go if an offer comes in? To be honest, I think um, I can probably see Fry probably going in somewhere like January, for example, because um, I don't think it'll be um, around this time come this Thursday. So I've got a good feeling if Fry, good feeling if Fry was to go, I'd probably say it probably will be uh, around January. Mm. What's, what's your thoughts on that, Liam, with regards to Dale Fry? Yeah, I think you do need a bit of depth, don't you, in that, in that position. He's a, he's a great asset to have, I think. Um, even if he's not starting every game, it's on him to force his way back in. If you do get rid of him, I suppose you're then on the lookout for a centre back, aren't you? And you haven't really got long of a transfer window left. So I think he's only going if we're getting somebody in. As you mentioned, we're probably at the limit now, aren't we, on loans? So you'd have to do it with yeah. him pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's more a bit of an attitude issue there going on, or there's a bit of a personal thing going on between him and Wilder, I think. Um, yeah. And he's obviously, Wilder wants him to play a certain way, and he hasn't quite wrapped his head around that yeah, has he so but we'll see I think he's well worth having yeah definitely definitely and in, in terms of Saturday's game Liam I mean going up 2-0 uh, up inside the opening half I was certainly held and the opening goal neatly tucked away and finished by Riley McGree one or two people have questioned the Aussies contributions so far this season what, what's your take on him well he hasn't set the world alight has he I suppose again he's another one with the juries out you know he, he he hasn't had any horror shows, I don't think. No. You know, he's not struggling to pass it two yards and you think, no, you know, well, get him off. Um, but then equally, you kind of watch the match and sometimes you forget he's even on the... He just drifts in and out, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, great finish from him. But I think other than that, and I suppose I'm getting greedy, he scored a goal at the end of the day. But other than that, he didn't really didn't really get me excited out your seat, does he, for an attacking midfielder? Do you think the issue is we expect too much from him? I mean, because... I don't think there's any doubt in his talent and he is a gifted ball player when he's got the ball at his feet. Do you think we just want more from him? Is it like we've had little glimpses of what he can do, but we you want more of that, don't you? Yeah. I think so. I think you want him to gamble a bit more, don't you? Play a few through balls, that kind of the kind of thing Tab would do. You yeah. know, and he got slated because you know he lost the ball, but you kind of got to gamble and go for those risky passes, don't you? Because if everyone's playing it safe side to side, we're not gonna win a match. But yeah. um yeah, I'd like to see more. I suppose he came as well with a bit of a expectation didn't he I think you know mm. seeing off other clubs to get in and all that and clearly a lot of interest and you think oh this guy must be good you know national team what have you and, but yeah he hasn't he hasn't struck me as like I don't watch a match and he's never stood out in any one match he's been in he hasn't had like a man of the match performance has he mm-hmm. um but you know like you say he's not he's not bad and I'm hoping over time he gets better gets used to the league gets used to the way we're playing and, and he becomes a really important part of our squad hopefully in the back half of the year Okay, pal. Andrew Dunn has uh, got in touch and he said, we used to have Tav Link in the plane driving mm. us forward. McGree's got big shoes to fill. Um, we've also got Bam uh, Burra in Thailand. We've got USA, Thailand. Right? He's mm. saying, Matt Clark made our defence look more solid and I hope Roberts gets a run in the, sh- uh, run in the team from now on. Thanks for watching, Bam. Um, the other thing with regards to Saturday, we've got another glimpse of a new player, Joe, was Rodrigo Munez. He came on round the hour mark. Mm. Um, how do you think he fared? I think he fared all right when he came on. I mean, he had that one decent opportunity that came off the post, but apart from that, you know, there were signs there that he could be a potential big player for us for this season. So I think um, if we give him a start, possibly within the next couple of games, he'll, as long as he gets like decent support up top, I mean, anything can, anything can go for him, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sky Sports report. Yeah, we see you now. I'm going to talk about transfer situations later on. Gareth, thanks, mate. Um, Terry French has mentioned about Dale Fry. He needs a confidence boost from the gaffer somehow. Do you think that's got to come from within, though, as well, Liam, with regards to yeah, Dale? He's challenging him, isn't he? He's saying, look, yeah. you're ever present. You've been in the squad, but actually, you know, of late, you've not really been setting the header alight. So actually, you know, let, let, let's see how you react to this, change it up. And he obviously wants him to play a certain way. And maybe Fry thinks his strengths lie playing a different way, but the challenge is out there now, and he either forces his way back in, or he's just going to sit on the bench for the rest of the season, isn't he? Or play a bit yeah. part, but it's it's kind of up to him, I think. Um, yeah. 
don't think he's been terrible um at the start of the season but wilder seems to think that he's obviously got a plan hasn't he? he's testing him he wants to get more out with him he thinks he can do more he thinks he can have a better 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 um role to play so we'll see won't we i suppose he either spits his dummy out and sits there or or what i'm not quite sure yeah plus, um, plus the fact that he uh, picked up an injury during pre-season and that yeah. probably would have dealt his confidence a little bit yeah but he's never really been tested like this, has he? He's never really had a manager in his short career that's, you know, not just put him on the team sheet straight away. And yeah. that's only thing you're going to get that in your career, right? You're not going to go playing sailing through your career. It's a test of character. Mm -hmm. You know he's got the quality and the ability. This is the same lad last year who had Cristiano Ronaldo and Harry Kane in his back pocket in two FA Cup games. So the talent's undoubtedly there. He, he's just got to show the character now to come back from this setback, hasn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure he will. Um, going back to Saturday's game, Liam, Bobby Madley decided to spice things up a little bit in the last 20 minutes. Uh, a few interesting decisions. First of all, the uh, penalty that Swansea got. I mean, we were sat there watching it. We were thinking, what's he given? What, what, what's he given a penalty for? And even watching it on the night, yeah, again, yeah, still couldn't really work out what he'd given the penalty for. I, I don't know what it was. I, think, I thought it was Anne Ball was my initial reaction, yeah. but then... Yeah. I'm not really quite sure what it was. Um, yeah. And you know, like you say on the replays, it was all, it was a bad angle, wasn't it? And it was over yeah. in about two seconds. So yeah. not quite sure on that. And uh, so maybe another report Wilder types up. He's, he's hammering that keyboard like Billy, isn't he? The last couple of weeks. But um, <laughs> maybe another report on that. But uh, yeah, Bobby Madley, you know, just bringing a bit of uh, bringing a bit of class, obviously, isn't he? Back down to the championship, Bobby Madley. Absolutely yeah. useless. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then obviously the later one, wasn't it? That the, uh, the, the challenge on. Um, on uh Jones. Jones, yeah. yeah. Messing around with it. I mean you shouldn't be messing around with it anyway, but yeah, it was quite funny. Yeah. yeah. We were say Tony Jones said madly give him a bit of a helping hand and, and yeah, on the Isaiah Jones one. I mean, great bit of showboat and outstanding one it Joe by uh, Isaiah Jones. Uh, and that was swiftly curtailed by Ben Cabango. He wasn't too happy with it, was he? No, I mean from what I looked at the highlights, I, Isaiah Jones got definitely got a full bottle of it, considering you know. Ben Cabango's brother plays a uh, professional rugby for Ospreys as well. <laughs> so uh, he's got a bit of force in that. But, um, it, I mean, it's pure stupidity. I mean, I was speaking to a Swansea fan, um, Reeves from Swansea Way days, and he said it was just pure stupidity coming from Cabango. So I think the red card was probably more than justified and that would probably be a second yellow. Um, going back to the uh, penalty situation, uh, obviously I was in the South Stand and so I got a good view of it. And like myself, I was confused by whether it was a what was the actual point of giving the penalty? Yeah. I mean, my first, my first initial thought was um, was uh, was Lenahan handballed in the build up, and then mm -hmm. there were some people saying Housen found someone in the build up, or and uh, Lenahan found someone in the build up, and then I saw in the highlights on ITV that it was for Lenahan's challenge on one of the Swansea players. So I think that's pretty much that cleared up in a way. <laughs> I think the only thing I can take from all that, and I'll agree with Michael Pellin, is that there's a few games this season the officiating in the EFL and in the Championship is goddamn awful, isn't it, Liam? It's, it's mind-blowing. It's yeah. absolutely mind-blowing. I mean, I don't mind them missing the odd tackle here and there or whatever, or you know, being a bit harsh or a bit lenient. But it's stuff like giving a throw when it should have been a corner or <laughs> giving a goal kick when it should have been a corner. It's like, it's just basic stuff. You know what I mean? The ball, you watch the ball go out and it's off someone, it goes out and it You think, what, what are you doing? Think of one job. Watch what's going on. Like, yeah. Mind blown, honestly. It, it, but I mean, it's never been great, has it? Even, even in the top flight. But my God, some of these lot. It's been poor this season so far, without a doubt. I would agree. And just on that sending off issue, Joe, I was just going to raise this, and Liam Wilde also brought it up as well. With regards to the Jones incident, obviously he got shut to the ground by Cabango, but it was then how many Burrup players got involved? Johnny Howson was there. Next mm -hmm. thing he had Barra Lenehan in there. Tommy Smith was getting involved, reminding the referee that he'd had already booked Cabango, because I think he'd forgot about that as well. But mm. it just shows there seems to be a mentality building within the team and the squad that we're all we are all in this together. We're all going to back each other up, and that's good to see. You need that in a championship season, don't you? Yeah, because yeah, especially when the start we got off to as well. Um, I mean, Tommy Smith did have a point. Uh, Cabango was booked early on in the game. I think it was like twenty minutes before he actually got sent off. He got booked. So I think the second yellow was again was probably justified, but yeah, but it shows the squad togetherness that was there last season. It showed again, you know, everyone stand together behind the fallen man, which was which was Jones. So mm. pretty sure is that uh, Wilder just has got does bring the squad together, you know, and um, you know, 
that could be key going up uh, to kickstart a season from there. Yeah. David Olsen's uh, just uh, got in touch again there, lads, and he's just said to you about the VAR and saying, do you think that's made fans more critical of referees? Because it seems as though every game fans are giving more and more stick to referees. Or is it just a case that really this season, so far in the Championship, the referees really haven't been up to scratch, have they? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, most people go around saying on TV that we could need VAR in the championship. I mean, I won't be surprised if that happens. But um, most of the referees, you know, particularly Premier League referees coming down to the championship, sometimes they remember had to remember the fact that there's no VAR in the championship, and uh, and that obviously sometimes um, can play on that sort of speak. But I think I think it's just carrying on from last season. The standard of refereeing so far from this from last season to now has been pretty awful. So, I mean, if VAR gets introduced in the championship next season, I mean, I won't be surprised that happens. But yeah. it shows that some referees mm. do need help, particularly the last couple of uh, seasons. I mean, the standard standard referee, like I say, it's been awful the last couple of years. Well, also, like death taxes, taxes, isn't it? Death taxes and crap referee. Being on <laughs> I remember I wrote to, uh, I once wrote to the FA. I was that, I was that annoyed uh, when we went to Chef Wed away. I yes, we uh, put the ball Lester over the line. No, I think they led it and someone, and uh, the player got up off the floor and he spat. Oh, yes, that was, that? yeah, 2015, uh, we got beat 2 0, yeah. And he yeah. spat and led it his face, and yeah. the referee came over, consulted the lines, and I was like, yeah, yeah, he spat in his face, and he yellow carded him. Yeah. I yeah. thought, well, since when's that been? So I wrote the FA, and I was like, <laughs> how can how can that be a yellow card if he's seen it and he spat in his face? It has to be a red, doesn't it? It was a quiet week at work that week, mate. What's that? Was it a quiet week at work? That yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, then they emailed me back and uh, they told me about, I think we appealed it or something, and they told me about a day before it was officially announced. So I pinged on the Gazette and the Gazette ran, a, ran an exclusive on it. <laughs> <laughs> 20 hours at a time. Yeah. There you go. With regards so to Saturday, get, get right. Liam, I, you mentioned earlier on when we were talking about Saturday's display probably not being as good as the West Brom and Sheffield United home games. But do you think Saturday was probably a more rounded, complete performance? For all, we didn't hit the heights that we did in those two games. Do you think it was a more maybe consistent performance on Saturday or would you disagree with that? No, I, th I think you're right. It was professional, wasn't it? And yeah. I think Wilde has learned as well a bit where we are at the moment. We're not as quite as strong a squad as he wants. We haven't really got the momentum going yet and the confidence, have we? So I think he's... You know, he made subs he wouldn't have made last week, I don't think. He was bringing on defensive-minded players. He was shoring things up. You know, I think he just accepted you can't always chase another goal. Um, and his tactics worked, didn't they? I mean, we had, what, 30-odd percent possession? Mm. You know, 40-odd, well, I can't, they had 60-odd percent anyway, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it showed he had a game plan, didn't he? Sit deep, try and hit him on the break. The first yeah. goal came from that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I think it showed that the following the plan, the following his tactics... Um, he, he was a bit more restrained, a bit more mature, I think, in his decisions just to get any. I think that told us that we, had, we were feeling the pressure a bit and we needed three points. I think he recognised that. And there's plenty of games we can go chasing, second, third, fourth goal. Um, so, yeah, I think all in all, it was good to just get a job done, wasn't it? And, yeah, we conceded, but it was from a, a dodgy dodgy penalty, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, think the, I, think the, I think the signs were there, obviously. Um, you know, if you look at the Sheffield United and Stoke games, there were signs that... The, the, the win was coming, but obviously, yeah, um, due to uh, tactics being going wrong, particularly even Chris Wilder admitted himself after the Stoke game, he got got some of the tactics wrong, when that, which obviously led to Stoke equalising. So, I mean, the, like I said, the signs were there that we could that we could have got the, those wins from those games, but obviously, um, a bit of bad tactics said otherwise. But obviously, yeah, it was good to get one in the end, uh, finally on Saturday. I mean, we talked there, it was a nervy finish because of that on Saturday, Joe, but what you've got to take into account of, obviously we needed that first win, but we're undefeated in three home games. And in terms of a promotion season, your home form's got to be the bedrock of a good solid season. So we need to keep this unbeaten run at home going for as long as possible, don't we? Yeah, considering, you know, the next uh, few games we got coming up uh, at home, our all, all big ones like Sunderland, Cardiff and Rotherham, who've, who've both mm -hmm. had good start so far this season so we've got to maintain our home form is probably going to be key for us uh, this season if we have a chance of uh, being at around the playoffs or even the chance of getting promoted yeah before we move off the Swansea game Liam Bam's been in touch and then Stephen Cramphorn's also 
got involved. And they both mentioned Isaiah Jones and saying that he looks low on confidence in their opinion and he doesn't seem to fancy taking players on anymore. What's your thoughts on Isaiah Jones? It's like his second full season. Now, last year was more or less his first full season as a pro. Obviously, got huge accolades for how he played and maybe things tailed off a little bit towards him because it seemed as though he was carrying an injury. But there's huge expectations on Isaiah Jones and you've still got to remember he's still probably learning the game, isn't he? Yeah, and I think he's, I think fortunately, for, I think it's second season syndrome, isn't it? I think, and as, as you see, he's probably feeling a bit of pressure. I think it's good that we've got Giles on the other side. We've got other options. We're not playing in a system like a try or a Tony Pulis set up where it's just giving the ball. And, you know, if he's not on form, we don't win a match. Or if he's not on form, we can't get back into it. Yeah. So I think we have taken the pressure off in that way. And, and I'm hoping he sorts himself out and he kind of shows a bit more confidence, does those forward runs. And we don't lose out in the meantime, if you know what I mean. We're still winning, well, we've won a game, haven't we? We're still creating chances. We're still scoring goals. And that's fine. Um, and let's just hope he comes back to form. Because he does seem a bit, um, I don't know, I think he's still a good outlet for us. Um, and it'll come right for him. And he will at that form again. And again, I hope he's another one who, when we need it later in the season, when we get those, hopefully those big matches where points are crucial, because it's a difference between second and third or fifth or sixth or whatever, it, it'll, it'll come good. You know, he's got talent, hasn't he? And he's, he's a great player at this level. Yeah. And Joe, I think this is a fair point that Tony Johnson makes that the presence of Matt Crooks on the pitch is key to Isaiah Josie because they have a great link up together, don't they? Yeah. Um, particularly if we uh, haven't got the height up front, uh, Crooks is a good outlet for uh, being on the end of either Jones or Giles' crosses. So yeah. I think Munez will probably have um, more of a decent chance because he's got a bit more height on him. But I think, mm-hmm. you know, you've got to rely on. Um, crooks to be in amongst the box once those crosses come in so and that's crucial yeah well obviously boys there's uh three just over three days left of the transfer window it closes on thursday night so there might be one or two more players coming in between now and then chris wilder did indicate on his press conference on friday that he's looking to possibly bring in three more players and there's been one or two linked today again um what's your thoughts on all of this joe obviously we've had uh the lad from brentford apparently We've been linked within talks today. Frank Onye, a defensive midfielder from Brentford. There's also been rumours of a unnamed English club putting in a bid today for Emil Reese Jakobsen at pressing of seven and a half million pound. Do you think they're two deals that could go through in the next seventy-two hours? I mean, it could be a possibility. I mean, Onye in particular. I mean, we spoke about this before the show. I think um, he's sort of in the mould of an Angolo Kante like player that yeah. we need, and plus. Um, we were speaking about he um, while he was on international duty in Nigeria, he picked up um, injury or it was either injury or COVID in between uh, that tournament, and then he came back to Brentford, and then there was showing signs that he was um, not fit to play at Premier League level. So I think um, a loan move in the Championship could be perfect for Onyeka, uh, considering you know what we got in the moment. I was looking at a couple of socials. I mean, tweets from Brentford, for example. I mean. They were saying the move out on loan to the championship for Onyeka could be perfect for him. Yeah. But um, yeah. looking at everything else, um, I think I've seen one link. We've been linked with Josh Windass again. So <laughs> I think he probably might be the attacking midfield option that Wilder might be on about. And like you say, with Emil Reese, I think, you know, if we were to be that club that bid about seven and a half million or possibly eight million, like Preston were demanding, uh, I personally wouldn't mind it because I can't see us playing like, over God knows how much for the likes of, say, Strand Larson or Gorkarez. So yeah. I think Emil Reese will probably might be the sensible option up front, to be honest. Yeah. And like you said, Joe, if Onyeka does come in, that's going to be a loan. And then that's your five loan players then, isn't it? So we can't have any more loan players in a match day squad. You're only allowed five maximum. So it would suggest if one or two more are to come in, they're going to be probably permanent deals. So, yeah, I mean, Liam, what have you made of the transfer? business at the Borough have done this uh, this window and obviously again Chris Wilder just as a second part of that question Chris Wilder said that he doesn't expect any major players to leave in terms of Fry, Watmore are you surprised by that do you think we'll be able to manage a squad if we get another three players in because the bench is starting to look a lot stronger now as well isn't it yeah I think I think on that second point I think we'll probably see if we does get in the full complement he wants I think a few players are going to go on loan aren't they I mean yeah He's mentioned Josh Coburn. There might be some others he sends out. Um, and I think, to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me. I think we'll sell if someone comes in and offers silly money, you know, the 11th hour or something, they're getting a bit desperate, they need some cover, they want what more or something for 
two million, three million, I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah. I think that's the only thing that will cause us to move. Um, and yeah, I mean, and as for business, I think it's been really good. I think it's been a really good window. Yeah. And I'm delighted that we're not, and it's the effect, I think, of having a proper recruitment strategy and a head of recruitment now that we never had before. We're not just getting, you know, the uh, the Optus stats up on, on a laptop and saying, right, who scored the most goals last season? Right, we'll just buy them for 12 million or 13 million. Or who's he in the Dutch league? Al- Al- Alves, oh yeah, he's got macaroni scored against England, didn't he? Let's go for him. And it, it, it's, there's actually some thought into it. So I'm really delighted that we're not going for big name, you know, players. I mean, the fact, uh, what's telling about the way we now do transfers is the, um, when we were offered Dwight Gale, yeah. You know, Borough would never not have gone for Dwight Gale when he was offered, I don't think, in, in yeah. the old days. And here we've clearly said, no, it doesn't fit the profile, doesn't fit the age that we're looking for. That money can be spent better elsewhere on a you know, future prospect or whatever. So I'm really happy with it. And it also means, you know, if the day comes, and it will, it will come, when Wilder up sticks and goes or goes to a better job or he's booted out or whatever, hopefully we don't have to do this again. You know, yeah. trying to wedge in 10, 12, 13, 14 transfers in a window. Yeah. It's crackers and it's costing us an absolute fortune. Yeah. And you would anticipate, hopefully, that it's going to be a lot quieter in January because notoriously that's a bad transfer window yeah. for anyone trying to do business, isn't it? And you only want to be doing a little bit of tinkering then, don't you, Liam? Or some emergency cover because you've had an injury yeah. or you need a goalkeeper in or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Walker said, uh, I hope what more doesn't go. He's not every fan's cup of tea, but he does make things happen for us. And he is a big especially impact player, Joe, isn't he? I mean, he did a job again at the weekend, but would you be happy to see Duncan Watmore remain as part of the squad? Yeah, it'd probably more, it'd probably more be mostly um, a backup option if so we need it, because he is more like an impact sub more than anything else for us, in my opinion. So I think the ideal, but I think both him, Boss and possibly Hoppy will probably be our more impact strikers coming off the bench, probably for the likes of... Uh, Moonez, um, I could probably see one more being in that position to cover a support. I, from my opinion, I probably would say Hoppy. Yeah. So, um, I mean, either that, either him, what more of us can definitely be more of a backup uh, option if we need to uh, back up Moonez up front. Yeah, and Liam Joe mentioned there Matthew Hoppy. He's got off the mark for the under 21s. He scored a couple of goals on Friday night against Stoke, um, and then another highly rated young striker at the club, Callum Kavanagh. Um, mm. Committed his future at the club till 2025. Decent business. It shows that the club are also looking further down the line, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And you look at. I totally agree. And and as I say, it it it's it's refreshing because we've I've been banging on about this for years. That you know other clubs are well ahead of us, or have been well ahead of us in this game of having a way of playing. And then you fit your manager. You know, you choose your manager. And it might not be the obvious manager. People might say, "What the hell are we signing him for?" Or let's go for. Sean Dyche or whoever, yeah. um, that's where we need to be going. It makes sense financially. It makes sense football-wise. And it means we're not losing a year to two years every time we change manager. Yeah, Because it takes us two years to get the last the last lot out, the new lot in, before you can even think about pushing for promotion. Yeah, um, really But yeah, no, it's really good. It's good, good we're looking at longer-term prospects as well. Yeah. Ian Black there has uh, got in touch and said, there, what more ran Stoke ragged the other week? His commitment is unquestionable, and yet you can yeah. never have enough players like that that can do a job for you. And Duncan Watmore certainly does that. Joe, we'll look ahead to tomorrow night's game at Vicarage Road now. Watford away for the Borough. Um, and after recording that first victory on Saturday, it's a tough assignment next for Borough, isn't it? I mean, when you look at the squad that Watford still have at their disposal, I think there's a few players there that we didn't expect to be here at this time of the year following their relegation. Yeah, I mean, Ismail Assar in particular. I mean, he was he was looking for saying he was going to be going to Aston Villa. Um, yes. in that, in that transfer window, but then that then that broke down. Jao Pedro is another one in question as well. Obviously, both Newcastle and Everton were after him. And and that's still ongoing at the moment. That can very well be leading up to um, possibly deadline day. But um, but you know, Watford, you know, they're a good side. I mean, they're under a new manager as well in Rob Edwards, who did really well with Forest Green Rovers last season, taking them from to the to League One. And yeah. but but they still kept the good some of the good sides in the Premier League, and then obviously uh, kept got all of some did some January business as well. I mean, Hamza Chowdhury is a wise acquisition for them. So and uh, but at the end, it'll be a tough assignment um, going up on Tuesday night, and plus a long trip for the fans that are going to be travelling up to um, Hertfordshire on t- tomorrow. So. 
it'll be a tough test, but I think um, I think I'll be I'll be happy with the points. But I think uh, we definitely need to win to get some good momentum going up to the uh, Tearsway Derby after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a point I was going to make, Liam, is with regards to going back to transfers a little bit. But how crazy is it that after tomorrow night we've played seven league games and the transfer window still hasn't closed? You've played like over fifteen percent of your season's games. And I mean, I think it's an unfair advantage that somebody say like Watford have been able to play players that in all likelihood aren't going to be there in a couple of weeks' time. But you've had seven games of the season before the transfer window's closed. It's just completely bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, it's totally crazy. And I, I don't, yeah, it's mad. There's no other way about it. I, and I don't understand the logic behind it. I assume it's to align with like foreign leagues or something like yeah. that. I, I, why would you? Why would you pick? Why would you pick this? Is it because this is the when the deadline normally is and we get we're cramming more games in because of the World Cup or something? Or? Yeah, I think that's why it is this year like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, it's just crackers, isn't it? I suppose one way of looking at it is well, everyone's in the same boat. But to your point, you know, not not everyone they're not all equally in the same boat. Are they? So yeah, some clubs, yeah. that, to your point, are benefiting from it. There's other clubs like us that had to do a big transformation job, and so we're at a disadvantage because we're looking at twelve transfers, not three or four. Yeah. Um, and there's still a risk that players get poached. No, between now and then, I mean, we're not even it for Middlesbrough, are we? But the next 72 hours, you could find that you, you lose your best players six, seven games into the season. Yeah, well, that was Tavernier, wasn't it? I don't think yeah. the club were really banking on him leaving this no. transfer window yet. An offer came in, the player's head was turned, his agent was quite happy to go with it, and, and that was it. You, you lose what was probably an integral part of Chris Wilder's plans mm-hmm. for the season. And like you say, there's nothing to say that couldn't happen in the next 72 hours again. Uh, Chris uh, Sykes has made a great point and he's just said there, give Wilder the time and everything will come good. It's just a shame that everyone wants results yesterday. But Liam, that's everywhere. That's not just at the Borough, yeah. is it? I was funny, I was talking to a Darlington fan today and yes, they're at another level that was complete, but it's exactly the same end. Whatever level you're watching football, the fans don't think about long-term or anything. You just want that victory and that game and then the pressure might ease for a little bit, but it soon comes back again, doesn't it? Yeah, totally. And I think I think we all know, though, we've got a good manager and, you know, yeah. it's making sense. We're not doing daft things. There's a logic behind it. So I think you buy yourself more time when you've got someone like Chris Wilder. I think, you know, we'll come on to Sunderland, you know, if they get the wrong manager or the manager the fans don't like, it's a different kettle of fish. Tony Pulis was the same, wasn't he? He was only ever two games away from being sacked, basically, yeah. because the fans tolerated it, but there was no warmth, there was no affection. You know, fan, a certain portion of the fans just, it didn't matter what he did. It, yeah. it wasn't going to fly. Joe Steve Walker said, uh, hopefully, yeah. Joe Pedro and Sarr linked heavily with uh, clubs tonight, so they might not play in tomorrow night's game. But do you think it could be, for some reason, a good time to play Watford tomorrow or possibly a bad time, bearing in mind they're on the back of a 3 2 home defeat to QPR at the weekend? What's your take? Is it a good or a bad time to face the Hornets? Um, it could be a bit of both, in a way. Obviously, um, they're. They've not won in the last um, three games going up to this game. I think they got knocked out of the Carabao Cup beforehand as well by MK Dons in last midweek. So, and uh, obviously uh, Uncle Albert did the business to uh, make for them to get peep out of the hands of QBR. So, um, I think it's um, one of them times that we could play them at a good time. Obviously, them a bit, bit low on confidence at the moment. Um, but on the other flip side, it could be a bad time to play them because you still have, like, say, uh, João Pedro sign. And even Ken Stemmer, who's probably yeah. one of their most informed players so far uh, recently for Watford, um, they could come with the form at the right time. So that could be, it's, it's kind of in the middle, so to speak, whether to catch Watford on a good or a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mike Pellin thinks it'll be a good time because he's fancying Borough for a 2 0 win tomorrow after Matt Clark's emptied his pocket to the Swansea strikers to make way for the Watford ones. Nice one, Michael. Right, you lads, what's your predictions for tomorrow night, Liam? How do you think we're going to get on against Watford? Draw. Score draw, I think. I think uh, I think it's going to be a tough match. It's their centenary match, isn't it? There's a lot of hype yeah. coming out of Watford about it. Um, I think they played very well against QPR and lucky to get being beaten there. They weren't too far off the boil. And they've had some great wins, haven't they? And great results, you know, playing the likes of West Brom and, and, and some of the clubs right up there. So I think it'll be a hard game. If we can come out with a point from that match, a win, obviously, we've just got in the bag on Saturday. And we can turn over the Mackhams, and I think it's a it's a it's a good good set of results in it. Hundred percent. Ian Black's in agreement as well. He says a draw will be okay tomorrow if we can back it up next Monday. What about yourself, Joe? How do you think we'll get on at Vicarage Road? 
I'm going to say the same as them. I'm going to go with a score draw on this one. Uh, probably a one-all draw. I think um, I think with most Borough fans' eyes, I think a draw against Watford will probably be the right result going into the Sunderland game. So I think, um, yeah, I'm probably just going to say a one-all draw. Yeah. Yeah, there well, seems to be a lot of confidence amongst Borough fans. Uh, Liam Wilde's gone 2 0 Borough and then a demolition derby, and that's what we're going to look at now, boys. Yeah, um, yeah. This time next week, we'll be minutes away from the first tease where you're derbying over four. Not derby, James. Not derby. Well, not, not a derby, according to the revved up beyond belief, won't they? You see them all when they arrive. They're absolutely yeah. revved up for it in the year. Borough, whoever Borough are, but they'll be yeah. revved up for it, whatever it is. But. Um, yeah, and there might be a familiar face in the old Macam dugout, uh, Agent Mowbray. What's your thoughts on that one, Liam? It's an interesting one, isn't it? It makes sense from his perspective. I think he'll be on a high and nothing there. I think mm. I think a bit like the Pulis situation at Borough, um, or I don't know, Sam Allardyce at Newcastle or whoever. He, he, he's, they'll tolerate him, I think, but if he doesn't get off to a flying start or doesn't get the results, I think there'll be massive pressure on him. Um, mm. Because I think they'll feel like well, I know because I've been speaking most, well, not all of them, obviously, but a few of them, um, a few Mackhams up, up here. And, um, you know, they feel like that would be sell themselves short. They feel, you know, they mentioned Bielsa and, you know, it's like the usual uh, roulette wheel of names. Even people like Dice, you know, turning the nose up at that, you know, oh, we need better than that. We want to play attacking football, blah, blah, blah. This is a promotion push year for us. So, you know, set aside the fact they're on a different planet. Um, I think it be a, it's, going be a, it's going to be a hard gig, isn't it? But I get his point of view. For Mowbray, it's half an hour, 40 minutes from his front door. He'll be well paid at Sunderland, I would have thought. And he might just think, you know what, what's, what's to lose? Um, also, I, I don't know if you spotted on, uh, I think it was in the Mirror or the Sun, that uh, Warnock's had his, had his uh, apparently he said that he's more than willing to come back from retirement. Uh, oh. He's contacted the sport director at Sunderland to let him know because he, he regrets turning him down in 92 or something. So yes. he'd uh, finish off his uh, career. I'll tell you what, that would be absolute Sky Sports gold. That if he's in the well, yeah. there, so narrative on that. that. Oh, I'll tell you, mate. <laughs> well, let's wait and see what happens. Damon LaRoche does think, though, it makes him sick the thought of Tony yeah, Moore right. being the manager. Um, and Michael Pellin, this is a fair uh, assessment of things. Mowbray's record against us is really good, and he has had some uh, good results, especially as Blackburn manager against us in recent years. Um, a point that Colin Fry it's made, Joe, is that after tomorrow's game, which is a difficult game, but if we can get a positive result, four of our next six games after that at home, and it's a chance then for us to maybe move up the table. So the next two games are really big, aren't they, Joe? Yeah, um, they definitely are big, considering, you know, and like you said, you know, the next four games after this are at home with uh, away games at Blackpool and Coventry in between. So we've got to make advantage, like I said, of our good home form and um, obviously start with... Uh, the uh, scum on the on the mon on the next Monday, so that would be the start of it. I mean, Liam, we haven't had a derby game for a number of years, as we've said, but I think the only player that's played, and we haven't got any T siders if Dale Fry's not playing. There won't be any T siders in the starting lineup next Monday, and I think there's only Johnny Housen that's fe featured in a game against Sunderland um, since we last played them. Do you do you have any concerns that maybe the squad? won't appreciate what the game is, what it maybe means to the fans, or they won't understand that it is a derby game or how big it is till they actually get out on the pitch. Do you have any worries about that next week? I don't think I do, no. And I think Wilder, he, he has his finger all over, the, and fingers in all different pies at the club, doesn't he? You know, you yeah. hear that in the press conference, he can tell you how many tickets we sold on the way match. Oh, we're going to be falling. No one prompts him, he just says it. Yeah. Um, he knows what's going on, so he'll know. And he's already mentioned, you know, big game coming up, you know, uh, Monday night. We've got to be ready for that. That'll be bouncing, you know. All the, so he'll be telling the players that. And I think if they didn't know, they'll be out there for about five minutes. There'll be the demented nut jobs in the corner wall, and the two and a half thousand of them. They've probably bought a load of tickets in the north stand, south stand, whatever else. So they'll be getting a bit, uh, what well, well, they call it, spicy, a bit spicy yeah. in, the, uh, in the home end. But yeah, so they'll get it won, and a few tackles will go in. And if they don't, we'll be shouting from a get dug in. Um, yeah. and it's a yeah. lottery, isn't it? I think a match like that. Who knows mm. how it's going to yeah. go? I yeah. think more than likely, more than likely, we'll probably end up in the north stand because we're mostly most of the south stand is sold up with mostly season ticket holders this season. So, yeah. more than likely, if, if Sunderland fans were to sneak into one of our ends, it'll probably be in the north, to be honest. 
Yeah. Well, both, oh, well, well they're very welcome, won't they, James, in the North? Yeah, we'll welcome them, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, can't yeah. wait to see them. Yeah. <laughs> like the Colin said there, the fans will let the players know what it means next Monday yeah. night. And David Olsen's also echoed that, echoed that and said, uh, obviously, we'll let them know the importance of what it is. It's a huge game to Borough fans. In terms of you two lads, obviously, Sunderland and Newcastle see the game against each other as being their derby. But out of the two, Sunderland or Newcastle, which is the game? means the most to you two lads come to you first Joe which one's the big one for you obviously um you would look at it overall I think Newcastle's a bit further away like an hour or so and yeah. Sunderland's only half an hour away so you're more more likely to consider Sunderland's like the big derby and obviously Newcastle will probably be the second yeah. Liam you were obviously living on Tyneside so what's it like for you <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 North Tyneside, yeah. I mean, I'm not you know, <laughs> six and a half mile away. Six and a half mile away. Um, I'd say Newcastle. I'd yeah. say Newcastle, but then I think it depends on when you've supported Borough and when you're kind of formative years following Borough. Are. So for me, we were always in the same league. Oh, nine times out of ten, we're in the same league as Newcastle. I'll tell you what's interesting: how long it's been since we played Newcastle? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't, I, it must be. 12, 13 years at best. Yeah. It'll be the first year after we got relegated from the Premier League in 2000. Yeah, we go down, they go up, they go up, yeah. we go. I mean, they're going nowhere for, for the foreseeable, other than upwards, I imagine, unfortunately. But um, but yeah, I always like beating Newcastle because once a big occasion, you know, they don't they think we're some tin pot outfit from Yorkshire. So, you know, they, they think Mackham's the bottom of the rung. So, but it's really great, you know, if you can go there and get a win against that lot, you know, and especially when they're dreaming of Champions League and whatever else they're going to win. Um, to go there to St James's and stick it to them, I, I, it doesn't get better than that for me. And I, I don't think I've ever seen us win there. Like, because again, it's been a long time. And then when we did play them, there was some absolute dire matches. I remember one under Steve McLaren, I was there, and uh, they had Sam Allardyce in charge, and it was absolutely dreadful. But yeah, yeah, for me, Newcastle, it's a big result because you know anyone can beat the Mackhams, can't they? I mean, <laughs> and the grounds are full and all that jazz. But Newcastle, yeah, stick it to them. Well. I hope it's us beating them next week. Uh, loads of great comments from the fans. Liam, why my uncles are similar than my brother's a Newcastle fan. God, got my sympathies, mate. I want to win them both. Um, Damon LaRoche, they're both big games. Uh, Michael Pelling, doesn't matter who it is. Sunderland or the Geordies want to leather them both. Um, yeah, in terms of memories of games against Sunderland on Teesside, have you lads got any memories of past games against them? Um, I think... Um... I think it's when we beat them twice in one season, one in the league and one in the cup. I think it was under, I think it was both Monk and Pulis, I think it was yeah. at the time. I think Monk took charge of the one in the league when Tav scored his league, first league goal. And yeah. then I think when we, I think it was 2 0, we think we beat them in the uh, FA Cup yeah. uh, under Tony Pulis. I think um, those two stick out in my mind still. I, mean, it's only, I know it's only recent, but those two are definitely. Um, Beat them twice in one season, stick them up on my, on my head the most. Yeah, you have to have a bit of a memory because we haven't played them for a while for some reason. I can't think why, Liam, but yeah, we no, have been on a voyage of discovery, haven't they? Yeah, um, <laughs> the, low, the lower circles of the EFL. Um, but um, you know, it's funny because when and this is why I think Newcastle that I seem as big a game when I was younger and following Borough, it was Newcastle and Middlesbrough generally that were in the Premier League and Sunderland were kicking around in the Championship. and and so we didn't really, it wasn't really that big a deal playing them. I didn't think anyway, but I suppose more recently, I remember we hadn't played them for a long time. We played them in that, was it the League Cup or something? Or yeah, the FA Cup? I think I went, I sat in the home end at the stadium of my life for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then we played them a night match at the Riverside and we beat them, didn't we, in the Cup? Can't remember, yeah. replayed them a few years back, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, some good, but we've always generally done quite well against Sunderland compared to Newcastle. Yeah. Always tend to get a result, haven't we? Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, loads coming in again from Borough fans. Uh, the, the Tav goals being mentioned. Uh, Damon LaRoche mentioned Stewie Down and scoring a yeah. scream. I think that was the game where Lee Catamall and uh, Grant Ledbetter had a great big scrap during the game when Ledbetter played for Sunderland and Catamall was playing for Borough. Um, so wasn't it Sunderland where Fester didn't he spit? Spit a Kevin Phillips, yeah. Yeah, that was up. That was, was up. Phillips, Phillips, right? yeah, we, I think we beat him one nil. Noel Whelan scored that night. Yeah, um, I remember. I mean, I am a bit older than you lads. I remember things like Don Goodman took a penalty for Sunderland once. I think it's still travelling through Albert Park yeah. now. We blasted it that far over the bar. And we did him four one. Um, 
I think so, it was yeah. one, there was one as well. I think um, when we beat them three 0 in the league, I think it was the year that Sunderland got relegated to the Championship. I think Nemeth scored twice and Macaroni yeah. scored once. Yeah, yeah. And then going even further back, Tony Johnson when we beat them three one in the black and blue strip in seventy five. Bobby Murdoch masterclass. Uh, I think John Hickton scored a couple of penalties and the place was bouncing. And you would expect the place to be bouncing next Monday, wouldn't you, Liam? I think so. I don't think it'll be a sellout. It's really weird, actually. I was on the club website yesterday and the bottom tier of the North Stand, you can't you can't buy tickets in it. Right. So I don't know if they've just shut it off and said, but that would look terrible if you've got a, a bottom tier with no seats sold. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what all that's about. But yes, I mean, they've sold out 2,500. I would have thought a few of them will try and sneak in. But you'd have thought, what, 26, 27,000, 28,000, something like that? I um, think it would probably be about 28. Thousand round that area because obviously it's on TV. You don't know what the segregation is going to be like. So I'm surprised. I think Sunderland have only been given two and a half thousand tickets, haven't they? And, and they've opened up a couple more blocks in the south, haven't they? They're moving it yeah. like nearer, nearer the Macams. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I think probably it will be about twenty eight thousand uh, around about the crowd next week. So we'll see. But whatever's in there, it's going to be a great atmosphere. Oh, yeah, so. under the lights, nice yeah. crackling atmosphere. Yeah. If we get an early goal or something. Yeah, he's the moment of truth, then, boys. What's the score going to be next Monday night? Um, I'm going to go for a 2 0 Borough victory. 2 0 Borough. And so, if I take that with your Watford result, Joe, four points from the week, that'll be a good return, won't it? Yeah, definitely a good return. And um, just hopefully set up nicely for a, a good sunny uh, trip to Blackpool after that. Oh, yes, yes. Get the donkeys ready in the... Uh, get your speedos out. Yeah, kiss me quick, lads, and all that. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Liam, what's your score next Monday night? 3-1. 3-1, Borough. Yeah. 3-1, absolute demolition job. Um, I'll give them one, because we'll, we'll probably switch off for three minutes or some dodgy decision or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I'm hoping Nunes kind of comes into his own and has a blinder and you know knocks a couple in and we're up and running. Yeah, Nunes, Atrick, according to Liam Wilde, Chris Sykes has gone 2-0, Borough. In all fairness, and all joking aside... Have Sunderland surprised you with their start of the season? Have you been surprised at how well they've started, Liam? Yeah. I have, yeah. I suppose you'd say most clubs, when they come up, don't they? they, they well, they either have an absolute nightmare and tank it and go straight back down. Or generally, it's a bit like Premier League clubs, isn't it? You generally have a bit of momentum behind you. just got promoted. Um, so it has surprised me. It'd be interesting to see what Alex Neal even does. Obviously, they've lost at home. Yeah. Um, you know, crowd size doesn't mean points, as we know, notwithstanding what they think. Um so it's going to be difficult. And I think if they get someone like Mowbray in and they're not quite happy with the way they're playing, it all gets a bit, you know what they're like. Yeah, yeah. That lot boo. I mean, the ground's half empty most matches at half time, isn't it? They, they, they just don't hang around. Well, half of them didn't pay to get in for a kickoff, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but it, it could get quite tasty there. It could get quite yeah. toxic. You know, it's, it's been toxic in the past. And if they have a feeling that they're not pulling on and they're drifting down the bottom end of the, the league, they yeah. might have to bullet a manager again because I think they'll fear going back to League One, won't they? But anyway, but yeah, the start's been good. Been surprising, yeah. I think. I expected it to be kind of probably what we've done. I expected yeah, yeah. them to have a few draws, a couple of losses, but mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see, won't yeah. we, in the coming weeks and months? We will. Yeah, plus, yeah. And plus, they've oh, gone yeah. under the radar. Plus, they've gone under under the radar in terms of um, the transfer business. I think yeah. they've been, they kept hold of most of the squad that they've got up from League One, really, apart from obviously they brought in Ellis Sims on more from Everton, mm. and he's been one of their one of their star players. I think both him and Ross Stewart in particular, they're the ones like getting in the goals for Sunderland at the minute, so I've got to watch out for them too. Yeah. Damon and there's a young lad as well from PSG or something. Yeah, he was at the game on Saturday, wasn't he? I think he's a young lad that they're hoping to sign on a four-year contract or something. Or And they've got some lad as well, Costa Rican international, but an 18-year-old as well, they brought him in. Um, so, but we'll wait and see. I think I'm in agreement with you, Joe, there, that Sims and Stewart have been the standout. As a partnership, they do look dangerous. Uh, mm-hmm. And they'll definitely have to be watched next Monday night. But as you say, fingers crossed it's going to be a win for Borough next Monday. Um, everybody, I'm afraid that's your lot for this week. Our time's up on the Monday night show. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks to Joe and Liam for joining me. It's been great to have you, boys. Cheers, uh, man. We'll return next Tuesday night, not Monday, because there's summer going on next Monday down at the Riverside. And uh, hopefully we'll have plenty to talk about and smile about next Tuesday when we're back. So until then, Have a good week. Take care of yourselves and up the borough. Up the borough. Up the borough.